Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Melanie Reback. It was April 2013, and we were under attack. It was a distributed denial of service attack targeting ING Bank. The C-suite was in the war room making decisions, and the firewall engineers were working overtime. But then something surprising happened. The network engineers picked up the phone, and they called the Robobunk, their competitor. They started swapping out firewall rules. And they found out that sharing the same threat, exchanging information, they were able to make each other more secure. So the point that I want to tell you today is that in cybersecurity, your company has no competitors. I'm going to talk today about cybersecurity and data management. Now, oftentimes, when thinking about data management, we think about how to close things. We think about how to protect things. But I'd like to tell you today that you can make far more gains not by being closed in how you operate, but in being open. If you think about it, the cybersecurity ecosystem is very collaborative. If you go onto the dark web, there's many moving parts and many interoperating parties, and they all work together. From the producers of, uh, of malware to those who uh, send spam emails to translators into different languages to help desks. Yes, they have help desks. <laughs> it's an entire comprehensive and coherent ecosystem, and they work together. But then on the defensive side, you have companies that sometimes think that they have to compete with one another. <laughs> you know? And we wind up having organizations that are stratified, that are siloed, and that are constantly reinventing exactly the same wheel. Now, even within our own organizations, within our departments, within, uh, there's also organizational silos. These silos do not share. These silos do not talk to one another. But the question that I want to ask is if the attackers are working together, how do we think if we also do not take an open stance and collaborate, how do we think that we will ever win? So there's a number of things that we can do. First of all, we can participate in data sharing communities. Believe it or not, there are groups of companies, but also different kinds of uh, governmental organizations, telcos, defense, and they get together with their competition <laughs> and other uh, you know, organizations in their industry, and they talk about the ways in which they got hacked. Needless to say, uh, proper NDAs are signed first. <laughs> But they're not so afraid that their competitor is going to run to the press, but rather they are trading out what are called indicators of compromise, IOCs. And these are pieces of information that you can take actionable, um, uh, well, defense, defensive measures with. So things like IP addresses that you can filter. DNS uh, names and you know, subject uh, lines of malicious emails, checksums of malicious files, these kinds of things. Another thing that we also sometimes don't understand is that we can get far more benefit out of harnessing open source rather than proprietary technologies. It's very easy in security to go and think you have to buy the first and the best black box that is sold by a commercial vendor. Many security decisions are compliance driven. And compliance is oftentimes seen as meeting some kind of a minimum standard, <laughs> you know, just to get some kind of tick you know, in a, a, a checkbox. 
and also to be able to uh, meet some minimum legislative requirement. However, we can go much further than that. The benefit of using open source is rather than having black boxes, instead you have crystal boxes. So what that means is the logic and the intelligence of that device not only can serve you, but also it can go to help increase your internal intelligence of your organization, also so you can make tweaks to adjust it to your context. Half of network security monitoring is taking the local context into account. And you need both external consultants, but also insiders within your organization to be able to provide that necessary information. Now, the reason why I personally was invited here to talk to you all today is this is going to sound a bit unusual, but I started the world's first not-for-profit computer security consultancy company. Yes, it's as weird as it sounds. <laughs> What I did is I was attempting to decouple the profit motive from the operational vehicle of business because I saw too many commercial security consultancy companies being closed and being non-transparent and not sharing their knowledge. By essentially giving over 90% of our profits to charity, <laughs> I essentially ensured that the operational decisions that we make in running our security company are for the pure benefit of customers, but also of society. So this is obviously a very new concept. <laughs> uh, and uh, I also do want to mention, of course, uh, this is a very short uh, talk, 10 minutes. I'm actually also giving a very large talk on uh, nonprofit business models tomorrow in the nonprofit room at 2.30 in the afternoon. So uh, just letting you know in case you want more information on this. But nonetheless, by giving things away, we can make each other better. And we also innovated this form of penetration testing called peak over our shoulder. What this means is that we uh, invite customers into our chat room to actually watch us break their stuff. And we also make use of a technique called chat ops, which essentially uses a chat bot to make blow-by-blow -blow announcements about exactly what we are doing. So we just make documentation for ourselves. The chat bot just says, you know, this penetration tester just made this comment at this timestamp. Click here for more information. So we have open sourced and given away for free this entire piece of software that we have developed that is at the core of the workflow of our entire company. We have also made it an OWASP project. For those of you who are familiar with OWASP, it's an uh, umbrella organization for web penetration testing. For all of this, we have won many awards. Radically Open Security is the 50th most innovative SME in the Netherlands. CIO Magazine called me the most innovative IT leader of the Netherlands, and also I was called one of the eight most innovative women in the European Union. Now, it's not about me, it's about the ideas, and it's very much about validating openness, transparency, and open source. <laughs> in this very short amount of time that I can talk to you, what I do want to say is that my entire company, security and penetration testing company, runs on open source. If it is good enough for us, <laughs> you know, it's probably also good enough for you. I've also even heard uh, rumors that even intelligence agencies oftentimes rely also purely on open source, because if they cannot look inside the software they are running within their own networks, they don't trust it. It's a governance issue. So I hope in the short amount of time that I was able to uh, give you some new ideas. Again, if you want more information about openness, transparency, and nonprofit business models, please come to my talk tomorrow at 2.30 in the nonprofit room. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Melanie, for your contribution. It has been a pleasure to ask you
here at the Web Marketing Festival 2019. I hope to see you soon. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Ciao, Melanie.